How's it going everybody? Back again. Hope you all are doing good. Uh, so in this video, wanted to uh, go over how a visually handicapped, uh, legally blind person uh, survives uh, the Souls games. Um, so basically, um, as far as uh, ranking the Souls games, um, my the first Souls game uh, I ever played was um, was Sekiro, and uh, love the game. Um, the uh, the story was uh, had had I feel like it had uh, almost more of a story than uh, the other Souls games. Um, the I mean the the lore certainly in the Souls games and Bloodborne uh, is certainly uh, very rich and deep. Um, but as far as um, actually presenting you with a story, um, Sekiro um, did that more. I feel like, um, but that game I feel like it was so good. It it uh, it deserves its own its own tier. Um, not to say it's above any of the other games, um, but it's in a class all of its own. And I honestly feel like Elden Ring is uh, in a separate class of its own as well, being that it was it changed the um, it changed the uh, style of game and uh, was open world, um, and it was so so good and extremely well done. And just it, I can't I can't put it in a category with the other games. Um, as far as the other games go, uh, Bloodborne was the second game I played, and I would put that at the top of my list. Um, and right under that would be this game, Dark Souls 3. And uh, under that would be Dark Souls 1, and at the bottom of the, <laughs> the, bottom of the pile would be Dark Souls 2. Uh, not to say that I didn't enjoy Dark Souls 2, but... Um, Towards the end, it got tiresome. It, it that game, you can really see the the lack of uh, Miyazaki in that game, and uh, the th that game just got really trolly uh, towards the end, and especially with the DLCs and whatnot. Um, I just ended up putting it down. I didn't even finish it. I was at the final boss, and uh, I um. I beat the Watcher and Defender, and uh, I had Nashandra next, and I didn't even finish the DLCs. I just kind of had enough. I, I mean, it was like I said, it was good, but um, definitely not as good as the others. Um, so, if you're a newcomer to these games, um, as far as how to, what to do, how to level up, um, that sort of thing. Um, obviously, you level up from uh, the souls that you gain, uh, slaying enemies. Um, and honestly, how I approached it is, um, you know, being visually handicapped. I, I wanted to know, wanted to know everything I could before I started these games. Now, some some people don't do that. Um, some people will, um, you know, go in blind, and that's that's perfectly fine. And um, you know me that that's not me i you know i want to know what's around every corner um you know i don't want to i don't want to get caught in a trap uh you know lose my souls or whatever you know I, and you know watching essentially watching somebody play you know kind of play uh, play the game before i actually play it you know the the fact that the fact that there are so many YouTube videos, sh uh, you know, showing the game, you know, it's, it's, even though I'm not playing, I'm still watching it and it's, you know, I'm reacting to it the, fir the first time the way anybody else would. Um, so I, I like to be prepared when I go into a game. Um, so I, you know, I watch walkthroughs, uh, I look at the, the wiki site, um, and that sort of thing. And, and the, you know the the biggest takeaway from that is is that nobody plays these games the same way. Um, everybody has their own approach. Um, so I made some notes here. Um, so I'm just looking at them quick. So as far as um, 
So as far as combat, general combat tips and how to approach these games, um, at, at least for me, um, you know, a lot of people will two-hand, you know, not use a shield and, you know, roll through attacks and whatnot. Um, that, uh, that certainly served me well in, in Bloodborne. And, you know, going, moving on to Demon Souls. Oh, crap, I forgot about Demon Souls. Um, yeah, you know, I would put Demon Souls at number three and then Dark Souls 1 and then Dark Souls 2. two. Um, but anyway, uh, Demon Souls was the, the second Souls game that I, or really the third anyway, uh, after Bloodborne. Um, and uh, in that game, you know, where you had a shield and you didn't in Bloodborne, I was a lot more, a lot more apt to, you know, shield up, you know, going through areas and, you know, they hit the shield, they get staggered, you know, and then attack them. Um, yeah, that's really my 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 strategy going through all these games really um now the thing with that i mean obviously you gotta watch your stamina uh you know the green up at the up at the top uh, top left of my screen uh when they hit you um and you have to manage that's you know like probably like the number one thing you want to do in a souls game is manage your stamina properly um like let's get yep let's kill them um Let's see if I can get him to take the arrow guy out first. Of course, I turned my back and he <laughs> decides to stab me. Yeah, see, he got stunned. Of course, I'm a little overpowered for this area, this beginning area, uh, the beginning area. But anyway, um, you know, that's my, that's really my approach. The, you know, the shield and... The shield up and attack uh, strategy, really. Um, but like I said, you you have to manage your stamina. Now you you probably saw in my you know my boss fights um, that uh, uh, you know you can't do that really in a boss fight sometimes because uh, you're they're gonna blow through your stamina pretty quick. Now as far as that goes, yes, you saw in those other boss fights that I was you know rolling through attacks quickly. Um, and basically, I, I feel comfortable, you know, doing a roll and then, you know, putting my shield up if I kind of feel like my roll timing isn't uh, exactly accurate uh, so that I can mitigate some of the damage I'm, I might take uh, after doing a roll through a boss attack. Um, and enemies like this up here, um, you can kind of circle, circle around. Obviously, these guys are tough at the beginning of the game. They so circle around and get a backstab. That's what I typically do with enemies like that. Um, that's a really effective strategy at the, at the beginning of the game because these guys are pretty fierce right at the beginning of the game. So he just see so he's got a he just did a lunge. He opened up opened himself up to a backstab. That's pretty much the strategy that I use, the the shield up and attack and the, you know, on tougher enemies like knights and whatnot, black knights, silver knights, whatever. Um, it's kind of like shield up, circle around, try and get backstabs where you can. Uh, thrust attacks are obviously the most opportune time to get uh, backstabs. Um, let's look. Uh, so let me... Obviously, the backstab method is really good. Um, also, I'm going to put on a parry shield here. Um, I am not the great. Uh, I am not the greatest at parries, um, but I will certainly demonstrate. Uh, probably fail miserably, but uh, see how it goes. Um, basically, with small shields like this, I'll explain this before I go out there. Uh, small shields like this. Um, you have a bigger parry window. Um, there's a different animation doing it that way and say put on another shield like um, I think this does a parry. Yeah. Oops. So <laughs> God. 
Uh, let's reset these guys real quick. These guys are not having my de demonstrations today. They're like, nope, we're going to cause mayhem. All right, so as far as medium shields with the parry, see, it's, my, it's a much tighter window. Um, I generally try to use the medium shields for parrying, um, just so I can kind of get it down. I mean, uh, I have used bucklers in the past, but... Yeah, I'm fail. I'm fa All right, I'm gonna take this arrow. <laughs> All right, guys, calm down. They are not having these demonstrations today. Come on. There we go. Obviously, if you can, if you can get the parrying down, it's like Dark Souls. Ah, too late. If you can get the parrying down, it's Dark Souls on easy mode. Like, um, I feel, I feel that um, I can go somewhere else where the knights might do it, but uh, like the Cathedral Knights, um, I feel like. Trying to parry black knights and um, black knights and silver knights uh, and cathedral knights are pretty pretty easy because they uh, they do like overhead uh, overhead slashes. All right, calm down, buddy. You're getting a back step, being a jackass. Not sure I'm gonna be able to. Carry this, dude. Crossbodies! Crossbody attacks aren't bad to parry either, you just gotta get the timing down right. And like I said, these guys swing really fast, so... For me, it's kinda... Come on. Ah, of course I try and parry the shield attack. Yep, yeah, and that's a weapon. Alright, can't parry that. Oh my god, dude. Come on. Can't parry that either. Okay, this is going miserably, so... You're gonna get a backstab as well. Come on. Or just smashed in the face. Okay. So, let's go... Actually, what I might try is try a buckler. See if I have better luck. I feel like the Loth, at least for me, the Lothar Knights are a little hard to parry. Um, the Cathedral, like I said, the Cathedral Knights and the uh, Black Knights are a bit easier. All right, dude, come on. Come on. He's doing stuff that I want him to when I roll away. There we go. God. Okay. So, the blind guy can get some parries off. It's just, you know, it's, a, it's like a risk reward kind of thing. Like, if you if you practice it and you're comfortable with it and you get good at it, uh, which I am not, clearly, um, then go for it, and it's, you know, it's gonna be an effective, a very effective tool for you. Um, so let's see. St uh, in general, with other, uh, combat tips, um, 
you need to you need to learn how your you know you need to learn how your enemies attack um and it's a, it's all a matter of you know studying studying your enemies movements and you know learning what they do and that's that's kind of how you you learn as well like what you can parry and what's easy to parry and stuff like that um and when to roll and you know you 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 know you study your enemies enough you know what they're going to do um you know and same with the bosses um as far as um stunning and criticals i mean that kind of falls in the same same category with uh like these guys these guys love to hold their shield up so this guy is very aggressive right now all right so you're getting back sam so if you get a guy oh he took out this arrow dude oh my god bro guys are being dicks right now okay so these guys love to hold their shields up for a while, and they're kind of hard to backstab. Of course, this guy is aggressive as well. You can... Oops. It's not what I wanted to do. Okay, you can... kick their shield down and do a critical. There are some enemies in the game that like to hide behind their shield a little bit. Uh, some of their cathedral knights tend to do that and stuff like that. Um, so getting, you know, kind of breaking their guard and stunning them, essentially. Um, you can get that critical att attack on them, which is really effective. Um, uh, so kind of in, in Elden Ring, they uh, change up the, the combat a little bit. Um, if you do more, you know, like uh, jumping attacks and... Uh, charged heavies like that um on bosses and enemies and stuff like that uh you get a lot more uh stuns on enemies um in this game i, th I feel like they started to do that uh because you see uh you saw in a couple of them boss fights that uh they got stunned uh but uh in actuality it was like more towards the end of the fight uh kind of finish them off kind of thing um so, I mean, in typical, like, these older Souls games, like, uh, you know, R1 spam is, uh, <laughs> is kind of an effective strategy, especially with the, this sword, like, it, uh, the R2s, like, kind of swing a little slower, and then the R2s are a tiny bit faster. Um, so R1 spam is definitely an effective strategy, but, um, that's the other thing, too, like, you gotta, uh, know your, um, know your um know your weapons and have a it's good to have an assortment of weapons i feel like um you know for any any given situation um that you're ready for you know if you uh um like let's see uh so if i was in a tight hallway like this is in terms of knowing your weapons move sets so i was in a tight hallway um thrust attacks are good because if you if you're trying to swing an enemy and you're close to a wall like let's say there's an enemy right here you're gonna hit the wall and you're gonna hit get hit by the enemy so you need to know like what your weapon can do in certain situations and and how to use it so like i said tight hallways thrust attacks are your best are your best friend um and uh also, like I said, the, um, you know, having, uh, multiple weapons at your disposal, like, um, you know, like a, uh, like a, a weapon that does dark damage like this one, um, having something like a, uh, um, a Black Knight weapon, like the Great Axe, um, that does, uh, extra damage to, um, demons uh 20 percent extra damage um and then uh i don't think i have it in my inventory right now but the uh the hollow slayer greatsword um in this game uh 
early on is a very effective weapon because it uh, you can do 20% extra damage to hollows. So these guys out here take 20% extra damage and the most of the knights in the game take damage. And the only way I know these things is, like I said, I do research ahead of time and I have looked at the scoured the... Uh, the Fexter Life uh, wiki site that I mentioned in a pre previous video, and super, super effective. Um, just uh, learning learning more about the game, learning what enemy enemies are weak to, and, you know, that sort of thing. And, you know, that's only, doing research like that is only going to, you know, further your, further your success in the game. Um, it... You know, it's certainly coming into these games. It's certainly a huge learning curve, but it's it's all worth it. These games are absolutely fantastic um, for for a difficult game to throw um, throw large obstacles at you and for you to knock them down and overcome them. It's a tremendous um, it's a tremendous awesome feeling to you know go through the game and just steamroll it. Um, so really, I, th I think that's it. Um, I think, um, I'm just looking through my notes here. Yeah. Um, that's really it. I mean, that's, that's how a, you know, me, a visually handicapped, legally blind individual has made it through all these games. Um, and, you know, this is my second playthrough of this game. I'm right now I'm in a second playthrough of Dark Souls 1, and me and my buddy are doing uh, some co-op stuff in there, so it's it's been fun. Um, and um, I do want to say that uh, I have seen some other fantastic videos on, on YouTube for other, just out of curiosity, I, I did, uh, I searched for uh, blind, blind gamers and uh, came up with and um, uh, a lot of videos, surprisingly, and there there are you know completely de blind individuals that play Mortal Kombat and they absolutely destroy people, and that to me is absolutely unbelievable. Um, the fact the fact that they can do that and you know the sheer time that it takes for them to learn all the sounds and and depend on that to you know uh, play play a video game is is absolutely tremendous. Um, and, uh, I saw another guy that, uh, used some, um, used some, uh, video, uh, video editing tools to show what it looks like when he, uh, when he plays video games and, you know, you could see the game, but, um, a lot of it was very, very blurry. And honestly, you know, my vision has fluctuated up and down for years. Um, and at times, you know, my my video gameplay has looked like that. And, you know, luckily right now I've had a bunch of surgeries and my vision's pretty pretty clear. Uh, I mean, obviously it's not 2020 vision or anything, but uh, for me it's it's exceptionally good. So, um, you know, I, I have absolute respect and nothing but respect and admiration for... You know the people that are completely blind trying to you know play video games. It's it's incredible. Um, but uh, that's really about it. Let me take care of this guy. We will end the video. He likes that shield smash. Got something for me? Oh, thank you. All right. So I think that's about it, guys. Hopefully, um. That was uh, that was a good explanation, and potentially, uh, you know, gave some newcomers um, some information, some helpful information, and um, all the power to you. And um, you know, I have nothing but but faith in in new players. You know, just stay patient, learn you know, <clears throat> learn the learning curve, and uh, you'll be successful um, as long as you don't rage quit the game in, you know, two minutes, it's, uh, you should be good. If a, if a legally blind individual can do it, you can do it. I have all the faith in you. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Take care.